really pleased to be here today with you. Um, this is actually something that David and I did a couple years ago at the um, uh, ARF uh, audience measurement, and um, it turned out really well. We had a lot of good feedback. Um, I know I was here all day yesterday, and uh, I, I know a lot of you were too. And um, uh, as researchers, we do tend to get uh, very involved in some some very nitty, thorny, difficult issues and technical issues and so forth. And um, so David and I feel very strongly that uh, uh, sometimes we need to resurface and hear from the people that essentially um, have their, their, their professional lives on the line, uh, who are running the businesses that we support, um, that the, the decisions that are made by those of you who are in the uh, supplier side of the business, as well as those of you who, who work for uh, either agencies or media companies or um, uh, advertisers. Um, you know, there are people at the top that are, are sweating bullets every day trying to make these businesses successful that we, that we support. And we are very fortunate to have a panel today who um, uh, David here is going to um, help them introduce themselves uh, in the spirit of this conference of, uh, of uh, quick introductions. Um, and um, uh, they represent uh, top executives uh, who are not researchers. Uh, and they're gonna talk about how um, how the business uh, climate looks to them and uh, ultimately uh, how research is affecting their jobs and, and, and their lives. David. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. We are very appreciative of having you do this. We're not gonna go into the weeds, but we're gonna start with finding out, rather than going through their magnificent bios, tell us who you are, what you do, and why don't you just go ahead, Bob. Sure. Tell uh, I'm Bob Leodice, I'm president of the ANA, the Association of National Advertisers. We represent the client side of the business, uh, which is over 400 companies that represent about 10,000 brands. And uh, the role of the ANA is essentially to be able to share uh, knowledge among the college of, of marketers that are part of our association and to uh, focus in on how to be able to make better marketing decisions as, as part of our overall responsibility. How about you, Leslie? So I uh, represent um, cor our corporate department at Time Inc, uh, Time Inc Branded Solutions, and we're a central group that allows marketers to come into the company and uh, buy media if they'd like directly with us on behalf of the entire organization, both online and offline. And I also oversee a full service uh, integrated marketing department. And it's really not about uh, integrating uh, clients add messages into our content. Actually, we have a lot of trouble with that. We don't feel that that's incredibly authentic. But what we do do is we take an advertiser's message and we make it work across multiple touch points or platforms from print to online to tablet, mobile, you name it, social. And um, I also oversee a studio so we can build video if that's necessary as well. Terrific, that's a time ink. Reno, great to have you here. Nice to be here. Um, I'm responsible for uh, implementation and media research across all Group M agencies. We have four agencies. Uh, we've uh, established a pretty much a centralized structure for, for implementation across all platforms, as well as media research. And uh, I have the agencies basically working uh, with my teams, uh, that some are integrated within the agencies, others sit at the Group M level. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the reason that we've kind of gone this direction is just because we can better utilize our resources on a centralized basis rather than have a duplicative system across four agencies, and it's worked out very well for us. Anthony? Hello, I'm Anthony Young, CEO for Optimedia, and Optimedia is a full-service media agency, part of the publicist group. We're sort of the anti-Group M in a way that <laughs> what we try to do is integrate all the pieces together, digital, implementation, planning, and of course, strategy. And so that's the, that's the kind of focus that um, hopefully I can bring to this panel. Terrific, Steve? Uh, I'm Steve Gelati, the president of uh, ad sales for Scripps Networks, cable networks, interactive sites, um, and, and basically uh, my responsibility is, uh, is to um, 
se secure the financial plan every year for our company and maximize the value of our uh, audiences no matter where they travel to and no matter where our brands are manifest. And uh, I'm fortunate to have a wonderful team to help me do that. And, and Stephen Reno might be negotiating right on stage. So pay attention, I don't think please. So. Okay, so let's get right down to business. Um, this really is, is, in every sense of the word, supposed to be an interactive panel. Uh, we'd like to spend the next you know, 15 to 20 minutes uh, having the panelists talk about essentially two things. What are the opportunities that this current uh, you know, environment, this, this sort of unrolling of new technologies, new consumer attitudes and trends, new, new uh, ways of consuming, media, new, the, new, the, the advertising business itself is changing, all of this, what, are, what, what opportunities do you see in the next couple of years that, uh, that this offers you, but also what, what are the challenges from a, a business perspective? And um, uh, any one of you that would like to start? I'll start. Uh, Go ahead, please. I mean, I mean, I think the biggest challenge that we have is that the research, the way we do research and we conduct data and the data that we use to do our, you know, our business in, in planning and buying media is so antiquated. Um, you know, it, it hasn't kept up the pace of change. I mean, right now we're still measuring devices instead of measuring content, okay. you know, which is now kind of traveling across all these different platforms. And it's a real challenge. We don't have an agnostic media research uh, database that we can use so that we can really optimize clients' investments across all these platforms. We basically build upon it. We have a lot of data and we try to kind of, you know, uh, analyze it and, and kind of figure it out, but we, we don't have it. I mean, you know, you look at the television business now and, and you look at the amount of online viewing of full episode content. It's going on exponentially. It's going up exponentially. And, and right now, we're, we're measuring it, you know, in a very different way. I mean, I know that Nielsen is trying to come out with, you know, the three screen and, you know, but we're still nowhere with it. You know, we're uh, yet, you know, this, the, the changes in technology and the way people consume media are changing so rapidly. Um, and, I, and, I, and I just think we're kind of losing our, our position as every day goes by and technology and, and the way people consume media is changing so rapidly, yet we're still basically measuring it the same way we did, you know, 30 years ago for all intents and purposes. What's the good, what's the good thing that's happening? That's the challenge. What's the positive in, this in, in the future? Well, I, I, think, I think there is some positives. I think the formation of SIM, I think, is, is, is very positive because it brings everybody together from different... Uh, different disciplines, and I think they're trying to make, you know, move the needle and, 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 tr and try to get better data and more integrated data. So I think that there is, you know, there, there is some positives out there, but we're still, the changes in technology are just so rapid now. I mean, you know, the fact that we have notebooks and iPads, and now we have the ability to really consume video in a, in a, in a, in a mobile way uh, that's been unprecedented. You know, two years ago, that didn't exist. And we're not in a position to really measure that properly yet. And, and, and what seems to take, you know, nine months or a year winds up being three, four, five years. And, 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 we, and then, you know, when we finally get there, we, there's, an, there's other breaks in technology that's developed, and we're behind the, the eight ball on that. It's very, very frustrating given the fact that we're a data-driven business. Leslie, I, what, I would what say it's nice today? to hear Reno say that. Um, because we're all living in the same space, and um, certainly our bread and butter are our magazine audiences at Time Inc., and we're in this really uh, difficult space where magazine audiences are evaluated from a price standpoint based on our circulation, and yet um, comparatively, they're evaluated on syndicated research, which looks at audience. So that's just a mistake in general. But then you take a brand, let's say Time. Time reaches, um, from an audience standpoint, a magazine audience standpoint, 19 million people in the US, 4 million more um, in the rest of the world. Then you have their unique uh, visitors, which on, on their website, which are 14 million. And then you have mobile users at 3.5 million. And I don't even know where they live. So that's a whole other problem. Then we have 2.5 million Twitter followers, 300,000 Facebook likes, 
We have live events, and now we're on every tablet known to man. Mm. That's a 50 million gross audience, yet it's bought and evaluated on the 3.3 million paid US subscribers. That's a disaster. And we need to figure out a way to take branded content audiences and put them all on the same playing field. Those are television audiences, magazine branded audiences, and create a, a, a syndicated data force that allows us to compare those. And if someone in this room figures it out, you will be really rich. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, do you, do you see an upside to, or a positive side uh, to all of this? Is there, is there something yeah. positive? Yeah, you know, I mean, look, I hear it every day, what's happening with magazines. Magazines are a distribution platform for branded content. Hmm. They just happen to be in a paper form, and that's what they're known for. But they can live in any platform. And really what the consumer is coming to is the content, and that branded content and that trusted content. So this is a new day for our business, because now that... 3.3 million paid circulation is 50 million users, readers, people who like it. It's a new day for marketers as well. This is the golden time for advertising and marketing because what we now have the ability to do is to do mass marketing on a one-to-one -one basis. What a great opportunity is for marketers to be able to reach their respective consumers, their target audiences with greater precision than they ever have before. But how do marketers really understand the return on their respective investments? How do they make decisions? This is the challenge, this is the conundrum that we have, is this wonderful opportunity to have all of this media available to us, to be able to market and sell products like we've never had the ability to do before, but the ability to understand the impact of those investments, the ability to make decisions on where to allocate their resources, to get the maximum return on investment, is escaping us. So the opportunity is, is quite substantial, but the challenge is even more substantial. And to the point that Leslie, you were making, it's gotten so confusing that we see this running away from us. And we're greatly concerned at the inability of the entire community to identify what the measurement vision is. How are we going to look at the entire measurement platform and then to be able to get it in a point that's usable for everybody in the ecosystem, whether they're advertisers, agencies, researchers, consultants, the media people, et cetera, we don't yet have that understanding at this point in time. Just to build on, on those points, I mean, I, the, re the reason I think I see the, why there is a disconnect is because the economics behind what brings a lot of that currency mm -hmm. research to bear is, a, is, is built for a different purpose than what the marketers are looking for today. Uh, it's built on this whole idea about eyeballs and reach and awareness, and that currency isn't as relevant as it was uh, years ago. So we, marketing has changed. It's gone more upstream. It's become more accountable and a higher expectation of what's, what's needed to, to drive accountability. And, uh, and we're stuck in this kind of the currency because there's a lot of vested interests because the initial purpose of it is for a trading Currency and where buyers and sellers can trade. But that's sort of become out of step with a lot of what marketing uh, and brands are, are wanting to achieve from media. Hey, uh, let me just add on to that if I can. You know, um, we have this fascinating environment right now. We have incredible fragmentation. We have a very um, uh, intense demand for accountability. Um, the the economy, the overall economy, which affects everybody, all of our businesses, is, is going to be, uh, uh, make it difficult to experiment and, and make it difficult to move out. Pe people will come to us and say, won't you uh, underwrite this service? Won't you buy this service and be a champion for this service? Well, from the research standpoint, from the intelligence of it, absolutely would love to do that. But from the business end of that, there are hundreds of now services coming out. I, I love the fact that there are um, a lot of new approaches to measuring more than what we're using today as the economic yardstick. And I say yardstick, it's an old measure. It's 20,000 homes against 115, 115 million homes. And it's not measuring the, the audience that advertising agencies and, and, and advertisers create that, that uh, demographic target of, of uh, Mary or John, uh, 45 years old, um, 
owner of their own home, uh, parents of two children, have these kinds of interests. That's the demographic that's created by the planning groups at an agency. It turns out it gets, it gets watered down to adults 25 to 54. That's the measuring stick. The measuring stick is too old. Now, all these new platforms are demanding a new kind of measuring stick, and I, I would suggest that it's not just a demographic. We don't stop there, even if we could get that accurate measurement, but that we go beyond that to um, receptivity. Uh, some of these platforms have the potential to be more impactful than others, and that doesn't make one better than another. It just puts them in a different place in, in terms of the economy and the economics of this uh, uh, media business. I think the, the, the challenge is to get through the holding pattern that the economy has put us in and to uh, push forward into that, into that frontier. Because, Leslie, as you said, somebody can do that and get that started. They're going to be um, wealthy. And the expectation is we are everywhere. And so, you know, that's not an inexpensive proposition to put our brands, and the, and the expectation is from the consumer. The consumer doesn't differentiate the platform in which they're taking in that mm. content. It's really about the situation that they're in. So the expectation is that we're everywhere. And so to make for a viable business, we have to be able to capture that audience across all of those platforms. This is Bill. This is I got. I got to ask them something here. Please. Yeah, they, so you want to, Steve? You want to change? You know, you, to a different type of currency because it's really not. It's there's a disconnect there. So, Reno, you're going to do business differently. Isn't isn't the standard in television? Then we're going to get to print. Isn't the and, and what are you going to do about it? Right? Isn't the standard? A. We're going to boil it down to a guarantee, a business guarantee on a certain target. Work. Isn't that a successful way of doing business? How would you do it otherwise? What do you suggest? In other words, not a research issue. Maybe it's a business issue, and maybe how do you change it? David, I, I, let me just, I'm going to preempt Reno here because Reno started changing this. Reno is responsible for sure. moving from the audience of a program. And, and a lot of people say to me, aren't you upset with that? Absolutely not, because Reno added a lot of health uh, to, the, to the business that we're in. And so I was, I was, in fact, we talked about it a year or two before you, you uh, actually talked somebody into doing it with you. I, I, wish, I, I wish I'd seen the, the uh, picture of it, but you, I, I give you a lot of credit for moving in that direction. First big step, but we have to take more steps than that. I mean, you also have to, you have to differentiate you know, what we trade on versus the data that we use to actually decide where we put our investments. Okay. That's much more robust. We obviously need better data, um, but, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that because we, we trade on a C3 metric in the case of television, that that's the beginning and end of it. There's a lot more that goes into trying to determine what's the right platform, what's the right program, uh, what's the right time of day. All that is, is kind of factored in. Uh, so I think the process is, is, is fairly sophisticated, even though when we, when we get to a trading perspective, yeah, it comes down to you know, a C3 rating and, 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 and CPM guarantees and things of like that, but there's, there's, you know, there's a lot more behind it that, that people don't necessarily see. Uh, but the concern that I have is the fact that people are, you know, people are changing the way they consume media. You know? I mean, the thing that's really frightening to me is that I look out now in two or three years with uh, you know, with television sets that are web enabled, okay? I mean, you know, we've had a, we have a world where, you know, television was pretty much contained. We have a huge amount of fragmentation, but it's basically just moving from, you know, three channels to 80, you know, but usage levels have been actually stable and going up. You know, my concern now is that with all that content that is now available on the, on the web and, and content that can be viewed in a, in a mobile type environment, if we don't find a way that not only to measure that properly, it's going to have a devastating effect on our business. You know, and we need to realize that because at the end of the day, particularly as it relates to television content, it's expensive to produce. And you can't stop the fragmentation. And these devices will start taking audience. We're seeing that already. And if we can't measure that and capture that, it's going to have an economic blow to this business that is going to be very severe. Let me build on that. You, you use the, the question, the rhetorical question, if we don't find a way 
The question is, is who is the we? And what's the plan that we as an industry are going to push, pursue in order to be able to answer the myriad of questions that some of which you've already identified, I'm sure there's a billion others. My concern is that we've not necessarily I defined the measurement, the broad industry measurement objective, nor have we defined the plan that this industry needs to craft in order to be able to answer uh, these questions. We, we identify lots of what it is that we need as an industry, but we don't necessarily identify the owners to be able to go after the answers and to be able to give the industry the confidence that your question, which I think is right on the mark, to be able to get those answers in a way that is going to be satisfactory to the ecosystem and it will provide some degree of a timeline as to when we're going to get there. Maybe if I could just kind of try and respond to that, because I'm not sure if we, I, the collective we as in multiple industries, um, can get to that answer. Because, you know, the challenge we have with currencies is that everyone's got, um, you know, everyone's got a stake in that game. Mm -hmm. And one of, the f one of the initiatives that we did at Optimedia on the television side was cr four years ago we created this content power ratings, which what we did was we aggregated the audiences on television, on the web, on mobile, and we applied some, you know, some qualitative factors, to engagement factors to that currency. And what we found is it changed, and it, what it created is it created a different currency that made us change decisions about where we put our dollars on television. Because some, some television shows where it had a stronger web presence, that wasn't being acknowledged for the Nielsen rating. And if, we were, if, if that is the outcome of changing currencies, then there's, there is a lot of inertia to stop that sort of change because there is vested interest a lot of times with legacy companies that are big sponsors <laughs> of this research. So I, I'm not sure if the answer can be can be um, can come become to from a, from an industry perspective because I think there are too many people in the room that have got too many self interests to preserve. So I think a lot of the innovation that's needed has got to come from individual media companies who feel that they have you know, a way of decommoditizing their their audience or their content, and mm -hmm. from agency buyers and and from clients that support those agencies. But trying to pull everyone in a room and get change. I mean, that's, that's part of the reason that will, that will, slow, that will slow the sort of innovation. Well, that, that would be, candidly, quite sad if we can't. I mean, we've got marketers are spending more than a half a trillion dollars on advertising and marketing. And if we can't expect the industry to find a way to come up with better tools, more precise tools, to help make decisions on those half trillion dollars, then, then that's got to be one of the greatest frustrations for our industry. So I'm, I'm really concerned. Something recently um, in 2009, we embarked on uh, an alliance with SMGX, um, an alliance for magazine accountability using Affinity and MRI. And we said, you know, we have a problem. So we're willing to take a risk. And we want to, and with the new measurement techniques uh, for magazines, we're actually able to look at our audience issue by issue and uh, compare that across the industry. And so this year we announced with SMGX that any one of their accounts can uh, purchase our media and we can be accountable based on audience. And we put ourselves out there and it was risky. And, and I would say that media companies in general are willing to take the risk. I think it's tougher on the agency side because you know what you can get in one area and you're not quite sure what you can get in another. And the promises are pretty big that are made to clients today. So that's the challenge that's out there, and I applaud uh, Starcom and MediaVest for taking that risk. Hey Steve, if you, if you came up with an, you, you came up with an interesting idea, a different approach for, for, for negotiating with print, television, radio, any medium, wouldn't you want to keep it proprietary? I mean, maybe it's going on and we don't even know about it. I'm trying to, you know? Well, I think there, there probably are um, uh, arrangements made between media companies and, uh, and and advertisers that are based on something other than um, Nielsen's uh, accountability of adults 25 to 54, or whatever the demographic might be. I think what we're talking about here is 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 not the one-offs. Um, an automobile dealer, uh, uh, an automobile manufacturer, a couple of years ago started using one um, a company for um, 
um, engagement metrics, yes. and uh, and I think it was a, it was a bold play, and I think it was a smart play, and, and you either signed on to that, and you and you got and you and you and you got the business from that company, or you didn't. And I think it helped that that uh, research companies uh, uh, get some uh, exposure and get um, and get used by other companies, but I it really I didn't was, take off. I know I was there, so it was wonderful. Thank you. But but it was a one-off, like you said, it did it's not a become. Right. It's a one-off, and I uh, and, and so I think we're going to see, just based on the overall economy, I th I think we're going to see one-offs. Mm -hmm. Media companies, um, um, it, the bill for Nielsen is rather significant. Media companies have a, have a difficult time signing up for two or three times that as a way of, of uh, launching a whole new uh, set of metrics that we hope can be used to um, uh, create a new, a new uh, measurement system. But we have to go there. It's the health of this overall business, the advertising business, all the media, all the platforms, is really dependent upon how we can and take you know the the, the old adage the fifty percent of the money that uh, is wasted and make that a smaller percentage and make make the business more targeted. That's the health of the business, and and uh, if we don't do that, um, to your point, we're going to be more than frustrated. We're going to be uh, working with a lot less resource. Right. I, to any of you, I, I, it came up before the issue about how do you pay for <laughs> the content, because with, with all this fragmentation and all these you know, over the top and around the bend and every other way, um, ultimately, you know, Leslie and Steve, the, the media companies, whoever produces this, con this professional content, it has to be paid for somehow, and it gets more expensive every day. Uh, and so you can do the one-offs and so forth, but um, how, 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 do, how does the industry deal with making sure that there is compelling content out there to support the advertising messaging? Anybody? Well, let me start. Um, we've moved from um, program uh, audience averages, pro the average for a half an hour program, to the uh, average measurement for the uh, folks watching the commercial breaks. Um, and that's a good start. But with the fragmentation and the, and the multiple uh, platforms that you'll find content on, one of the things that's changing is the model, the business model for a half hour television show. Because instead of, you know, years ago seeing it in reruns in the summertime and seeing it in, in, um, in um, in a, a new form in fall, and you had a number of years of amortization for the cost of that shows. That is shortening because you're now seeing that show anywhere you want, whenever you want, but you're only going to see it as many times as you can endure watching a rerun of something you've already seen. So the lifespan of the show and the amortization of the cost of that show is changing. Now that's going to put pressure on on the on the business model to. Um, uh, you know, to come up with higher CPMs or higher value, advertising value um, uh, for these uh, programs to keep more fresh programs on the air or, it, or it, and in the world of television, uh, it goes away. But it's not just television, right? It's radio, print, Correct. auto, you, na right. you name it. The cost of, Leslie, the cost of programming, yeah. if you will, for how many magazines? Yeah. I mean, it's so, not going away. You know, we, um, I think, when the when the recession really hit full swing, I think all media companies, particularly those rooted in publishing, evaluated how much that consumer was right. paying for the right. content. And um, at Time Inc., we take that very very seriously. And at Time Warner, the notion is, you know, at Time Warner, the notion is TV everywhere, pay for it once as a customer. That translates down to Time Inc. Content everywhere. Wherever you want to receive that, you need to pay for it once, and then you can authenticate your experience across every platform that you ever want to uh, use it on. So we know that the consumer has to pay for that content. Um, at the same time, I think we go back to how do we create the right valuation metric 
for how many consumers mm -hmm. are seeing and absorbing and using our content. And it's not out there. It's um, sort of out there from a growth standpoint, definitely not from a net standpoint. And, it, and really, all, the only thing that differentiates us is the box or the paper in which the content is served. It's still a relationship that they have with that um, experience. And we have to find a way to um, sort of neutralize it and make it even across the board. Bob, I want, to, I want to ask a question. I'm hearing about some of the wonderful ideas of how to measure content, new metrics, got to do this. Who's paying for the research? Who is going to pay? I mean, what if it doubles in cost to really do it well? What's, what's going to happen? Let me, let me take a crack at it. I mean, in the end, the client's going to have to pay for a chunk of this. And I think you can incentivize the clients to, to do that if we understand the value of the bad decisions that we're making because of inadequate measurements. So I would challenge the, the research community to identify the productivity lost as a result of inadequate decisions, bad decisions, whatever you want to call it. If we understand what that figure is, call it, I don't, I don't know what, it's several billion dollars. That would incentivize the clients to invest, I think, appropriately to say, this is what we need in order to be able to upgrade the quality of our measurements. So in the end, it's going to come down to the clients making those kinds of investments. But we need to also understand what's the value of, of, of the carrot that we're pursuing. But, Bob, that's, that's you know, in, in principle, that is that's a, <laughs> an admirable view. But in reality, of someone who's running an agency, what I've learned is trying to pass on additional costs to a client for research is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. Certainly on the digital side, we've been able to do that more effectively because that data has, that's very specific and very valuable and can inform better decision making that can kind of translate to better business sales. But overall research, if I'm an agency and I run my budget and I have a research budget, it is under pressure and I do not want to, I'm, I'm less willing to invest in currency research because it doesn't really give my agency or my clients a competitive advantage. And you know, where do you invest your dollars, you know, any investment dollars? They go behind things that are going to give you a competitive advantage, things that are going to help you grow your business. And a currency, because it's a platform for trading, uh, because it commoditizes media to some extent, um, isn't going to be a priority from an agency perspective. And, I'm, and I therefore not, am not sure if it is from a client perspective either. I hear you, and I think you're absolutely right when we're dealing on a one-on-one -on -one basis, agency with client. What I'm talking about is I think we have to approach this on a macro basis to get the entire industry, the entire research community, the entire advertiser industri industry, the entire agency industry, to be able to approach this on a macro basis and make this a universal commitment we can't do it one off. I mean, we're operating in silos, whether you want to call it SIM or the cross-platform study that the IAB 4As and ANA are pursuing, or brand-specific commercial ratings that we're trying to get through, through Nielsen. There are so many of these research projects, but we're doing them slice by slice by slice. When are we going to tie all of these together in a broader vision so that we're pursuing this collectively as an industry? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, I think, you know, I, I, do, I do understand that there's an expense to research. Uh, but I think it's, it's, it's well versed, well versed the, the, the value you get. But I, but I think if we're all going to go on our own separate way to come up with our own proprietary <laughs> systems, you know, we're not going to go anywhere because it is expensive. And it also has to be something that we can all agree on so that we can, we, we can use it in, in, in our transactions because that's what's the driving engine of the, of the media business is the economics behind it. So, I mean, I think SIM is a a good first start where we do have people across both the, the agency side of the business and, and the media side to try to come together and decide where do we want to invest our money? Because there are thousands of research companies out there. And you know what, if we invest in all thousand, we will get nowhere. You know, we really got to zero in on what is going to drive the most value the quickest and then focus in on that as opposed to kind of all living in our own little world and having proprietary research so we can sell clients. The, uh, the uh, uh, effort, um, and I think the name of the, of the group is Viviki, and it's an uh, it, uh, effort to understand uh, the best model to advertise in the new uh, platforms. And they started a couple years ago with, uh, uh, in the digital space, and now they've moved into the uh, uh, tablet space. 
And it is a consortium of uh, advertisers, a, 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 a group of uh, agencies under that one umbrella, and media companies, print companies, and even software companies have made investments into that to, to uh, create a measurement, create a, uh, a methodology of actually uh, crossing the bridge to the consumer that is um, hopefully open to, or is being open to uh, the whole ad community. Because to, to Reno's point, it doesn't make any sense if each agency creates or finds a new yardstick or twist on the yardstick to measure audience. That's not gonna, that's not gonna make any sense. We, we as, a, uh, uh, as media, if I, if I could be bold enough to speak for media, we could never afford the, the multiples of expense that would come from um, pushing out that kind of research unless we were willing to say goodbye to some of the older yardsticks. And, and um, I, don't, I don't think we're ready to do that quite yet, but uh, I, I, like, I, I kinda like the idea that uh, you know, a large group of agencies, a large group of clients, and a large uh, group of media partners would, would get together to try to create something with the understanding that what is created ends up being open for everybody to use. I mean, as opposed that, I, to just that priority. And Optimedia is part of that Viviki group. That's the, uh, I guess, the Group M version of Publicis. And, I, and, yeah, and we have clients participating in that, the pool, which is this research um, group that, that is designed to try and look at future formats of how to measure, uh, measure and what sort of formats are better from an advertising perspective. But it, it was driven because you know, one, one agency group took a point of view and tried to drive it. And it's, you know, and to some extent, Jack Clues rings me and says, hey, I want you to be a part of this game. It's going to happen. <laughs> but trying to do that over an industry, you know, of competitive agencies, um, I think is, is tougher to do. If, if I but could, that is um, a good model for innovation, I agree. If I could jump off of what uh, uh, Anthony, you and Steve just were talking about, and we have just a couple minutes left, and ask each of you if you could just flip a switch and overnight transform one aspect of the way business is done or the industry is done or research is done <laughs> in advertising, uh, what would that be? Um, why don't we start over here and just oh go gosh. around the, the group. Flip a switch. Um, I'd, I'd love to just be able to at least identify one measurement that we all could rally behind and say, this works. If we can at least get one out of the starting gate, I think that would provide us the confidence to be able to overcome the challenges that Anthony was talking about. I agree with that and have magazines um, looked at on an audience basis, not just on a paid circulation basis. Just one media agnostic <laughs> yeah. database. That's all. That'll make me a very happy man. <laughs> Uh, maybe not one thing, but a bit of advice, really, because we've got to still find a way of paying for this. So I think if we were to put all our research on the table and, and start saying which pieces can come out to help pay for the, the innovation that needs to take place, that's, that's perhaps a way of getting to that answer, because I don't feel we can get clients to, to spend more or that we can pass that cost on to them. Three Steve. words. If I, it, it, to answer your question, if tomorrow you woke up, kill fast forward would be what I would say. <laughs> Are the three things that I would like to see, that those three words would like to see materialized so that when you hit your DVR fast forward button, it didn't work. I, th I, think, I think, you know, you know and, and serious, seriously, um, it's, it's an innovation. It's been an innovation for a number of years. It's, and it has, again, put pressure on the model of creating content because advertising is a big um, revenue stream, is a big support structure financially for uh, creation of content. And obviously without uh, uh, eyeballs viewing the, the commercial messages, that will water down the expense uh, companies pay or can, can afford for uh, new and innovative content. So I, I would say, um, to be serious about this, I would say uh, 
you know, we might be at a place where, where um, uh, we, re we go back to the future. Um, I'm intrigued now by some of the companies that are measuring um, and cross-indexing the um, purchase patterns of consumers with their viewer viewership patterns. Um, uh, we have a couple companies here, Kantar and uh, I think uh, uh, TAR. It, uh, some of those companies here in, in, in this uh, uh, in this forum are are in that in that business. I think there's something there to 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 it, that that's the shortcut around going through. Uh, John and Mary, 45 years old, parents of two, and it's going right to who buys the product and what do they, what can, what media do they consume, and if you can make that a a, a smaller leap of faith, I think you have a um, uh, a shortcut to a, a better business model. I'm sorry, we have to shortcut this because, but the good news is this was staggeringly good. Thank you very much. Let's give, please, thank our guests. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much.